How do folks, uh, Bones here. I just uh, wanted to do a quick workshop tour, if anyone's interested. It's a little update of what I did about six months ago, and uh, I've made a few changes, added a few new bits, so it might be worth uh, just sticking around, seeing what uh, can be achieved in such a small space. My workshop isn't perfect by a long shot, and uh, I, I wish I had a bit of a bigger space, but a bigger space you only fill with more crap and this is uh it's because it's so small it's quite ergonomic everything's you know within re reaching distance really so the only downside is you have to sort of keep on top of the uh the housework as it were you know tidy up after every little job otherwise it just gets too much but maybe that's not a bad thing eh? you know keep on top of the tidiness and uh it's uh you're not tripping over everything so if you watch the other video I did a while ago, it's probably about six months ago now, you may remember that um, there was another wall on that side that ran down just past the radiator there. So basically my sh this big shed is two smaller sheds stuck together. I butted them together and I had a doorway there and then the, the, the two walls of the either shed were butted up against each other and the doorway was formed in there. Well, I got, this, I got a new milling machine, that Sieg there, and the only way I could get it in was to cut that wall out. And I made a platform along here. And with the help of a friend and an engine hoist, we uh, hoiked it in, which was a bit of a mission. But uh, we got it in. It's 30, um, 30 stone, that machine. So it's uh, quite a significant weight. And I didn't want to break it down into smaller parts. So in the end, it was the best thing I ever did because it's really up, opened up the shed now. When that was there, that wall, it was quite dark on that other side. But now the light just seems to flow through a lot easier. And obviously I can carry things in and out without uh, too much issue now. Uh, so, yeah, so anyway. So the Sieg milling machine I got is quite happily sat there now. And the uh, usual bits and bobs for it. Then I've got the Myford. Super 7, which I've had for uh, maybe three, three, four years now, I think. Uh, I really love that machine. I probably could have bought a better spec or a more capable machine for the money that I spent on this, but uh, I love these machines. You know, they're just, they've got a bit of character to them. They're not perfect, but, uh, you know, this one's a 96, so it was made in England. And uh, I really love it. I keep on top of this sort of, housework on that as well and uh, uh you know look after it and hopefully one day it'll be still worth a few bob so on that wall i've got all the you know usual sort of stuff you have arbors chucks tool chain stuff and stuff uh whatnot drill bits milling cutters and up there and more bits of crap it's amazing how much stuff you uh collect so this side I've got, uh, well, a box of crap, some forming tools and just sort of display stuff. That's a little vacuum table I made for vacuum ABS plastic. On this side I've got a small bandsaw. This is just one of the sort of draper ones. I think it's a draper, something like that. It's only cheap, but it does the job, but... Uh, it's very basic and uh, you have to, sort of, again, keep on top of the sort of maintenance with it. It's a bit rally, but I only do small bits of woodwork, you know, just little noggins of stuff and and whatnot. So it's not a major, major problem. The linisher I use quite a lot. I don't use this side really so much, but if I needed to, I could, all these, these two are just loose on the bench. So I can move them around. The linisher here. This is a worthwhile mod if you uh, if you do small parts. I'm, there's not much health and safety in here, so I kind of just hold parts in my hand, and every now and then, as you know, they'll slip out, and the small parts I was linishing or I do linish will get caught down there if they slip out, and then there's an old mighty crash. The uh, the sandpaper tears and there's well it's carnage in it so i made just a very simple table just to slide on there so now if i do drop it it can't go down there so that's worth uh worth doing on something like that if you if you're doing small parts the roller and folder bender again that's another little cheapy 
I think it was about 350 quid. It's a, one of those Clark ones or Axminster. I can't quite remember, but uh, they're all very similar. And I wouldn't be surprised if they all don't come from the same place. Just got a different colour. A little pillar drill. Not really sure why I went for this one. It's not very uh, traditional sort of uh, pillar drill. <coughs> Excuse me. It's uh, It's more of a hobby one. Uh, and again, I don't do a great deal of woodwork or big hole drilling, but uh, it's been quite good actually. It's got quite a lot of torque to it, so it's uh, it's working out all right. It's got a, a light function. If I can turn it on, it's got a laser liner, a light, variable speed. It's got the head depth and stuff, so it's yeah, it's all right. It's all right, and it's Bosch, so it's kind of you know. A decent brand. This is a bit weird though, look at this little steering wheel. There you go. So that's that side. The Seag I've been enjoying using. I've put some splash or swarf trays on there as you can see and that helps massively with tidy up. Uh, if I ever need to remove them, they're only on small magnets. So it keeps the uh, keeps the tea slots reasonably clean. Same with the back. That's just on magnets, so I can take that off should I need to. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, this is a brilliant little mod. If you've got a big vice like this, it's worth doing a putting some sort of flywheel on there because you can open and close the jaws of the uh, the vice much quicker between smaller and larger parts. Nothing worse than that, using a, this, this stupid Tommy bar to try and open it. So this is a definite, definitely a good mod. This I've set up, I need to do some sort of uh, work on this, but uh, if I'm honest, I don't really understand how the, <laughs> these work at the minute. I've been kind of winging it, but uh, I'll get the hang of it. I've got a basic understanding, but um, I need to do a bit more research and. Uh, figure out really what i'm doing on that this is uh i forget where this came from uh is it alibaba it's one of those one of those sort of sites but uh it's obviously from asia and <clears throat> it doesn't get damp in this shed but obviously there's a temperature difference through day and night and i've been noticing it's sort of getting a bit of surface rust on there whereas this hasn't so this is obviously a better quality and the lathe doesn't so I think this is just, um, you know, an inferior casting. But there you go. That's what it is. So, again, a bit of scotch bite on there and a bit of uh, WD-40. Right, so this side, that I kind of call this the clean side. Obviously, this side is a lot more sort of muckier and metal metal work area, that side. So this side is more the clean side. So on here, I've got a fibre laser. Sorry, not a fibre laser. This is a CO2 laser. And that does all my organic materials and woods, uh, perspexes, that sort of thing. And I use that quite a lot. In fact, I use it a hell of a lot. I do, when I make a, a prototype of something, I generally make it out of wood first, uh, glue it all together, make sure stuff fits together. Kind of what I did on this. I'm making an ejection seat at the minute. So when I initially made this ejection seat, it was all in wood. And then once I've confirmed the size and the shapes and stuff, it goes over to the uh, laser cutters to cut out on metal. So yeah, I use that a lot. You might have been wondering what that is. Some of you will have guessed, no doubt. But uh, I'm making a model of the Whittle engine. This one, uh, where have we got? So this engine is the first British engine to fly. And I thought it'd be quite a cool model to make. And uh, as you can see, I'm kind of got the sort of combustion chambers ready. I've done the connecting tubes, but uh, yeah, it's a long slog this. And I'm just doing this for fun, really, because um, I'm interested in that sort of thing. But when it's done, it'll be, uh, it'll be a massive... Uh, 
massive model. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, to be honest, but <laughs> I'll try and flog it, I guess. So that's, uh, that's that. This side we have, uh, let me just spin that around. This side we've got my fibre laser. So on here I do all my metal engraving on this. I've got, um, under here, I've got some jigs now, which I've made. And this allows me to do watch case backs. Watch case backs on, on there. I've got a jig for, let me just show you. So I make watch straps as well. And some of my watch straps on the buckles that I have, I can engrave. So I've made this jig, and as you can see, if I can just get that in focus, they just fit in there. So every time I want to laser something, I just set it up on the uh, CAD and rattle it off. I know exactly it's going to be in that in the correct spot. So I've got one for that, one for that. If I want to do case backs, I can do them in there and make this this I've I can make this bigger or smaller for various different things. Uh, I've got another jig there for. I'll just try and line that up. Another jig there for other buckles similar to that, and some other cylindrical things that I engrave every now and then. So this jig, it kind of does, well, a lot of things. Not everything, but, uh, and then if I want to do flat work, I just pop that on there. Uh, extractors are must with these things, because if, if you've done any welding, you get kind of that welding uh, smell and the dust. So you must have that extraction. And, yeah, so that's, so if I just show you my, um the ejection seat here i'm doing i've made one already and i've been commissioned to make another one for somebody and uh, this is my website if you're interested go over to gasgasbones.com and on there you'll see all the stuff i do so i make watch straps i make quite a lot of watch straps and i do watches as well so I've got a small watch brand, so that's worth looking at. I've got a new watch coming out, hopefully later this year or maybe early next year. And then here, which is probably more interesting for you guys, is the stuff I've made or I've been making. So that ejection seat there behind me will look like that eventually. So as you can see, all those parts there, well, some of the parts, there's a lot more, a lot more parts to go. These parts here, which I've been uh, working on. So that's, that's the workshop. There's the sewing station. That's kind of kept tucked out of the way. I, like I say, I make uh, watch straps for a living, really, uh, as well as doing this stuff, the commission work. And other, other bits and bobs. I make display units for some people. That kind of thing. Some stuff I make for fun. So I just made this A10 Gatling gun for fun. Just because I thought it would be kind of cool to have. The Whittle engine. That's going to be just sort of a fun thing. But uh, like I say, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it after. Maybe a museum or hopefully someone will give me a large wad of cash for it. And uh, it will be gone. So that's the uh, workshop, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. If you've got a small workshop, you know, it is a bit of a struggle sometimes getting everything in, and when, especially when you want to expand. But uh, depending on your situation, um, there's, there's always a way. When I first started doing models and making little steam engines and stuff, this is going back just when I was married, I had a lathe. I had an old round bed drum and lathe. And it was literally under the stairs with a few bits and bobs. So, you know, you don't need a massive space to start. You just need a bit of adapt to what you've got. Um, the missus wasn't very happy. I had a lathe under the stairs, but there you go. 
I'm still with her. She's still she's still knocking around, so can't have been that bad. Anyway, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for uh, looking in. If you've got any comments or anything or any questions, pop them down below. I'll try and answer them as best I can. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. See ya. Ta-da.